hand and declare and decree and say whether my enemies like it or not I am a candidate of miracles we don't measure our enemies by their by their size we measure our enemies by the size of our God you may be seated. Let us quickly run through what I call the 16 steps to the, hill, to the holy hill of anointing. Let's turn to the book of Psalms. Is there any handkerchief? Any handkerchief and water? Let's begin from the book of Psalms, chapter 15, verse 2. We're going to be very, very fast because there are 16 things I want you to know. Let me have a handkerchief. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? And who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He when we speak of holy here, we speak of a place of anointing, speak of the house of God, speak of the peculiar concentrated presence of God, where God will saturate you with his presence, where his presence will mock anything that mocks you. The Bible says, who shall dwell in that holy place? Yes, sir. He it shall be, eh? He that walketh upright. A man that lives uprightly and walks, and walks righteously. And speaketh the truth in his heart. No, that's number number one is to walk uprightly, yes. to live a straightforward life, to walk righteously, to walk in righteousness. Number two, go on. And speaketh the truth in his a heart. A man that speaks the truth in his heart. A, a man who is honest to tell himself the truth. A man that will not delve into telling lies against others. 
Well, anybody who will get into this must, must fight the enemy will cause suspicion and mistrust. I don't know whether you know that suspicion is a powerful demon. It can make you see what does not exist. It can make you suspect your husband, suspect your wife. And unfortunately, you don't see things as they are. You see things as you are. But God has interest in a man who will not blackmail others or spend his whole time in, 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 in imagining things that do not exist. I, I, I was going to Calabar those days. At the Oran Beach, I met a man and greeted him. He, he turned and asked me, have they told you I had problem in my marriage yet? The way you greeted me shows you already know. And I said, I don't know. Do you have problem in your marriage? He began to cry. Let's go to number three because of time. He that backbite not with his tongue. He that will not backbite with his tongue. Somebody who will not slander others. Somebody who will not bring down others in their absence. Somebody who will not accuse others even in her own heart or in his heart. It is easy to, 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 to slander somebody in your heart. There are, there are people, when they see you discuss with a sister, they conclude there might be something going on. I, I was shocked uh, on a flight from Lagos to Calabar. People came to greet me. As we disembarked from the plane, a woman asked me, what were those people flat, flirting with you? Why were they flirting with you? Madam, how? In an aircraft? There are people who have what I call warped up minds. They see demons where there are no demons. You have to deal with that or else you live a life of pain. In a life of unhappiness, a life of wounds in your heart, widow, nor do it evil to his neighbor. We are called not to, not to slander our neighbors. When in marriage, your husband is your first neighbor, your wife is your immediate neighbor. When I speak of them, doesn't mean someone who lives away from you, but someone who lives in the same house with you. You must not think of harming them. Men and brethren, a, a, a filthy heart is a dangerous heart. Because somebody, in, in fact, the miracle of marriage is indeed a great miracle. Because if your wife is not happy with you and she suspects you and mistrusts you, she can poison you. A man can also beat up his wife and kill her. But the Bible has a warning. The man that shall carry a mountain must be a man that will not plan to hurt and or harm his neighbor. I have been with great men. I had a man that liked me so much in, in the 50s. He caught his wife in adultery. And the woman was having this adultery in the house. And he said to the man, I will not harm you. When you are through, go through this door and go. If my wife did not invite you, you couldn't have been here. So I will not harm you. And then he left to prepare food for his wife and himself. I asked him, sir, are you well? <laughs> he asked my man, will I start because my wife quarreled with me? I can cook. So I prepared food for her and for myself. One of my great friends from the Korek Pene, an elder of the Apostolic Church, the wife, the wife did the same with his friend and they had a child. And he called me and said, Oh man, drive them to correct when I went. He said to the woman, I have forgiven you. I'll adopt that child. And the woman said, No, the shame of what I've done will not allow me to live with you again. And he said, Okay, we have two houses, one in Calabar, one in the correct pen. Take one to take care of yourself. But I will not remarry unless you come back. I asked him, why me? Why did you invite me? He said, I wanted a dependable witness. 
that was the first time I learned the lesson on forgiveness. Then I'm praying, there are people when they kneel down, they say, God, that person is a sinner. <laughs> I was speaking about sin, University of Benin. And a young man raised his hand and said, Reverend, go on, they are all sinners and fornicators. And I said, Will you shut up your mouth? Just last night you committed fornication, you. There are people who specialize in condemning others. But blessed is the man that confesses his own sins to God, for he shall be forgiven. Read on, sir. God taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. Go on. What you have taken in whose eyes a vile person is contained. I, I want you to hear me. God honors those that honor those that fear him. A believer must not befriend unbelievers. We are called to love those that God loves and hate those that God hates. It is wrong when you have an unbeliever as a friend. All of us, we absorb influences as bread absorbs water. You must love those that God loves and hate those that God hates. For you to receive the anointing we are talking about now. Let's move on to the next step. What are we now? Verse what? He that sweareth to his own heart. He that will swear will swear to his own heart. And change it not. No, no, no. The Bible simply says, don't make stupid promises you cannot honor. Unfortunately, there are people who play, make plays and say, I'll give 50,000. Here, yeah, they will not bring it. Can we see the book of I mean the book of Let's see the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 10, verse 4. What does it say? When thou vowest a vow unto God, defend not to pay it. For he when you make a vow either to give money or to witness for Christ or to pray for unbelievers you know and you fail to do it. You are hurting yourself and you're destroying the hand your hand the works of your hands. Read on, sir. The fame not to pay it, for he had no pleasure in fools. The Bible says God does not do business with fools. Pay that when you promise every time you pray to give money, God will begin to give you that money instrumentally. I was speaking at the Covenant Church in Ibadan. A woman walked in late. As she was going to her seat, I said, Madam, stand up. Last Thursday, your bank manager insulted God because of you. You borrowed money from the bank, and God has given you that money five times, and you have spent the money on jewelries. And she fell under the anointing, they carried her away. After the service, I wanted to see her. She said, She was afraid of me. I would not like to see me. God does not like who make promises they cannot keep. What did Jephthah say? Jephthah said to his daughter, I have really opened my mouth to promise God that whoever comes out of my heart to greet me after this victory, I will slaughter that person unto God. The, the daughter did not protest. She said, Allow me to mourn my virginity and you can slaughter me. As believers, our yes must be our yes. Our word must be born to us. Once we say it, we shall do it. Read on. Yes? Pay that which thou hast vowed. No, 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 we are back to Psalms. Well, well, he, 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 he that footed not out his money to Israel. 
Let's go to verse 5 of chapter 15. That's verse 5. He that put it not his money. That is to say, don't cheat innocent people. Don't cheat an, a, a, a poor man or cheat an innocent people. Don't cheat. There's one, there is a supermarket to the year I have been shopping there for 30 years now. Because they are very honest. If you bought anything and forgot it, they'll bring it to your house. If they gave you change and took your money, they would return the money to you. The Bible demands that we do not cheat anybody. Even as we take offering, if anybody sends a plate through you, don't take that money. Because if you do, that person's problems will be transferred to you. I am, I am amazed that some people can think of saving from a fellowship like ours. Because the day you pay for it, you will not, something happened here in New York. A man borrowed money from Union Bank with you and refused to pay back the money. The bank threatened the manager to sack him. He ran to me. I sent to the man, asked him, why will you borrow money from the bank and not pay back this money? He said, ah, reverend, bank money is public money. The loan I took is my own share of this public money. I, I never heard that before. I was shocked. So they're about to sack this man. He's a married man with children. He said, I don't care. Let them sack him. Sorry, I did do one of those things my wife asked me not to do. I said to him, for saying what you have just said, you are going to pay. You are going to go through sickness that only God can heal. And soon after, he, he tested cancer of the blood. Anyway, the day he came for prayer was my counseling day and I said to him I uh, just go home you sleep every day for six days on the seventh day your strength will bounce back and you'll be found healed he, he began to cry hey, what do you pray for me? look at this man I've just prophesied over you leave my house two weeks after he returned wearing an overstyled guinea brocade that's me. Do you remember me? I said, look at this. I remember you, the walking corpse that God healed. As a child of God, God says, don't make promises you cannot fulfill no honor. And don't try to cheat anybody. Already in life, you can't cheat anybody. Because God is the Lord of harvest and the law of harvest. In every contact involving two persons, he the third person. When you take from anybody, you will pay back in various varied ways. If God is going to anoint you, you must not cheat others or dupe anybody. Any money that is not your own, don't touch it. Don't even join those who go about giving prophecies. Don't say the Lord, give me every money on you. You're a thief. God did not say that. Let's go on, sir. Let's okay. now see. Okay. Let, take, uh, let, no, let's rush to chapter 24 and we'll take verse 4. Chapter 24. He, he that had clean hands. He that has clean hands. And a pure heart. And a pure heart. Who had not lifted up his soul into vanity. Nor we, we, have to, we have to fight pride and vanity. What is pride? Pride says you are what you are by your discipline and intelligence and connection and your parentage and your education. That is arrant nonsense. All of us say we are what you are by the grace of God. Everybody here was born naked. Nobody came into this world wearing trousers. Anybody? All those who say they are self-made people are liars. There is no self-made man. The day you were born, you were born naked. Somebody covered your nakedness. 
Am I correct? Somebody said you. Am I correct? But for let us, if you're pretty, God made you pretty. If you if you are born into a rich family, how many of you know it is God that made the choice, not you? He didn't choose your mother, he didn't choose your father. God chose them for you. And that's why we must return thanks to him. If you're pretty, God made you pretty. I know you have a mirror, but your mirror is a liar. You didn't make yourself pretty. God made you pretty. And there are two things that can make a woman pretty. The shape of her nose, the shape of her mouth, and the luminous density of her eyes. You can't buy them in any market. All you John the Baptist hair and the painting you do, they don't add to your beauty. They make you a suspect. Let's watch to number 16, verse 6 of chapter 24 of the book of Psalms. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. We must seek, those who will receive the anointing, they must seek and pant and pine and crave and hunger after this anointing. Did I say I will pray for those who want this gift today? Is that what I said? I asked my big man, he said no. Let it be next week. We have children dedication this night. I want you to really, how many of you, let, let's rush to chapter 4 of the book of Luke and we take verse 14. Jesus fasted his way to the anointing. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit yes. into Galilee. Yes. And they went out a fame of He fasted for 40 nights and 40 days. I'm going to ask you to give up your dinner from tomorrow through next Tuesday. And I will bring one more teaching on the 16th text anointing. And I'll pray for you. But I'm going to ask God for... What gift you need? Let's see the book of Isaiah 55 verse 1. And the book of John chapter 7 verse 37. We'll stop there. Oh, everyone that tested. The only qualification we all need is hunger. Longing and craving and pining and, and pining and panting for these great gifts. And I want you to come to a place where you say to God, whatever in me will stop you from anointing me, from blessing me with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Take that thing away from me. Because there is nothing that is greater. You know, last week I was speaking about wisdom. Can we rush through the book of Proverbs chapter 3? We take 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Among the seven gifts, seven spirits of God, this God is willing to give you as many as you deserve. Not desire, deserve. And one of these seven spirits given to you will make you a star in life, a star in the kingdom, a star in your family, a star everywhere you go. Just one of these spirits of God. And when God has it to the fruit of the mean to the gift of the Holy Spirit, you become a commander of signs and wonders. Please stop accepting ordinary as ultimate. Be all that God wants you to be. Yes, sir. Happy is the man that finds Happy is the man that finds wisdom. And the man that gets it understanding. And the man that gets it understanding. The merchandise of it is greater the than, than, of of is greater than that of rubies. And the gain thereof than fine gold. <laughs> the gain of wisdom is more than fine gold. And what, what is wisdom? Wisdom is the commander of success. What is wisdom? It's ability to see the unprotected forehead of your Goliath. And to see the stones would be to bring down your Goliath. And I declare tonight, whoever is that Goliath on your way, shall fall, shall fall. Shall fall, shall fall. You don't need traditional weapon. You need ordinary catapults. 
Why? Because God wants to take the glory. When the army of Egypt ran after Israel, Moses cried and God said, Stop crying. What do you have in your hand? He said, The staff. But how can a man fight an army with a staff? No. God was going to stand behind that staff. Already, God will show you the unprotected forehead of your Goliath. And I want to prophesy that that Goliath shall fall. I just said, one of these seven spirits of God, if given to you, will make you a commander of signs and wonders. How many of you have a desire to say to God, whatever weakness in me will stop me from having these things? Take away that weakness from me. No, not the weakness per se, but the love for that weakness. And, Father, show me what I must do. Every promise God has, has an instruction attached to it. All those who have a desire to receive of this gift next week, can you stand up before God? And let's say to God, my God, my Father, why I stray far from my home on life's rough way? Oh, teach me from my heart to feel Wait, sorry. While this song is going on, if you don't have the assurance of your salvation, if you want to know Jesus personally and intimately and spiritually and empirically and livingly and as a living reality, you don't want to be a nominal Christian. You want to be one that has a healthy relationship with God. As we take this song, step out here. I said to God, this night I hand over my life to you. Be the manager and the governor of my life. Lead me, I will follow. Teach me and I will follow. And from what I've said, I can't think of anything greater than any of these gifts. Nothing. Because already wisdom is greater than money. Only God can give you something more than money. And it can start this night. So as you take that song, and you don't have the assurance of your salvation, the joy of your salvation, the glory of your salvation, the offer of your salvation, and your desire is God, I want to know you personally, and I want to know you intimately, I want to know you experientially, I want to know you empirically, I want to know you livingly, I want to know you as a living reality. Let my ears be made open that I may hear you. That I may receive instruction from you and be the person you want me to be. As you take that son, those who feel this way, step out here. We'll pray for you. Let's go. My God, my Father, why I stray far from my home on life's rough way. Oh, teach me from my heart to say that I will be
Stand up and raise up your right hand and quickly do that. Just before I pray, there are about 30 people who have lost their zeal and their uh, consecration. They used to be on fire for Jesus, they could witness for Him anywhere they go, but now they are neither hot nor cold. If you want to rededicate your life, join those who are standing by the altar. Come quickly. We don't have time. Just say to God, I, I want to be on fire one more time. I want to give up whatever will limit me. Every distraction on my way, 
shall be pushed out. Raise up your hand as you come and repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I have no excuse. I have no argument. I am as guilty as the Holy Spirit has judged me. Come into my heart as my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer. And cleanse me from my unrighteousness. Give me the grace, the ability to rise above my weakness. Write my name in the book of life. And grant me the assurance of my salvation. The joy of my salvation. Open my ears to hear your voice. And give me, give me the grace to obey you. Every covenant entered into by my parents and my ancestors on my behalf. Let it now be cancelled. Only your covenant shall rule over me. Put your mark upon my forehead. Let it be known that I am now yours. Hear me, O oh God, for I ask in Jesus' name.